after a successful tour to Pakistan where they beat the world number one ranked team 3 0. Sri Lanka were humbled by the Aussies in the three match T20 series as the hosts crushed Sri Lanka to record an embarrassing whitewash. Disappointing would be an understatement as to how the Lankans performed in a country where they had not lost a T20 series in the past. With that in mind, let's take a look at how the players performed individually. Almost all the bowlers Sri Lanka tried were hammered by the Australians, even the mighty Lasith Malinga. He found a little bit of form in the final T20 international but still couldn't make much of a difference as he ended up with only two wickets in the series. The captaincy of Marlinga will surely come under the microscope once again as this is the ninth T20 international out of the 10 players that Sri Lanka has lost under the captaincy of Marlinga in 2019. His 4 in 4 in Palakale in the dead rubber match against New Zealand was the only match winning performance he produced. batsman couldn't make much of an impact in this series. But after one failure in the first T20 international game, the decision to axe Banu Rajapaksha and Oshida Fernando from the playing 11 is a worrying sign of Sri Lanka cricket once again following the baffling selection policies which led to their downward spiral in 2017 and 18. Niroshan Dikwala and Kusal Mendes, two of the experienced players in this young Sri Lankan side, collectively scored 19 runs in the five innings in the series. They had a decent series back in Sri Lanka against New Zealand where both of them made crucial runs, but the lack of contributions from the duo in Australia seriously diluted the solidity in Sri Lanka's batting unit. If Sri Lanka are to do better in the future, these players will have to take the responsibility and deliver. Shuffling the Iqbala from the middle order to the top order didn't help him either. It would be much better for the team if the selectors would stick to a certain number of players with assigned positions for them in the batting lineup so they will know exactly what is needed from them in the playing 11. Sri Lanka's main spinners Lakshan Sandakan and Vanid Hasaranga couldn't succeed in Australian conditions where the pitchers usually help seamers more. But the argument is invalid when you look at Australia's spinners Adam Zampa and Ashton Egar's figures as they shared 8 wickets in the series to Sri Lanka's 1. After being named player of the tournament for his wrist spinning brilliance in Pakistan, Hasranga was punished by the Australian batsman going for 60 runs across two games. Kasum Rajita only played in the first T20 international as he was axed from the 11 after a poor bowling effort where his 4 overs cost Sri Lanka 75 runs, the highest number of runs given in a T20 international spell. The fastest Sri Lankan bowler of the series, Lahiru Kumara, was used only in the third T20 international where he gave away 49 runs. Sri Lanka missed a great chance to try out Kumara in all three matches to give him the confidence needed in Australia to bowl in Australian conditions which will be crucial for Sri Lanka in the upcoming World Cup. Though not ticking the wicket column as he deserved, Ruan Pradeep was the best bowler for Sri Lanka in the series. He impressed everyone with the ball with economical figures in all three games amidst the carnage at the other end. The only silver lining in this disastrous tournament is the way Kusal Pereira responded to the lethal bowling by the Australians. He top scored visitors batting charts with the only half century by a Sri Lankan in the series. In the first two matches he got decent starts but couldn't capitalise on it and rectified the mistake in the last T20 international. The position he bats in the 11 is another conundrum to the selectors as he was moved from number 4 to 3 within the series. As the best batsman in the team, it is evident that he should bat more overs and should be sent as high as possible in the batting order. With the T20 World Cup in Australia coming up in less than one year's time, Sri Lanka have a lot to ponder on how they should go about things and what they should improve. The selection committee aren't doing them any favours too if they go through a full man squad of 15 players in just three games in every tournament trying to fit in a new player after one or two failures. Fortunately, they have 12 months to figure out where they want to be. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this and don't forget to hit the bell icon for our latest content.